Joe is fencing in his backyard. He has 100 linear feet of fencing. He only needs to put a fence around the sides. So sides and back, because like the house is here. So he doesn't have to fence in that part. Um, it says, what dimension should he fence in in order to maximize the area? So we don't know the dimensions. We're trying to find them. So I'm going to call this x, and I'm going to call this y. Mm -hmm. We're assuming this is a rectangle. I'm telling yeah. you it's a rectangle. I think I like forgot that part, but it's a rectangle. It's kind of like common sense, right? Back and sides like tells you it's a rectangle. Yeah. I guess not, yes. but like if you just want to ask me, I'll confirm it's a rectangle. Now it says that he only has a hundred feet to put all the way around, so that's a type of perimeter. Yeah. So in this situation, like normally we would do like perimeter is like two x and two y, but we don't have this here, so we're just gonna do x plus x plus y. So is equal to our 100 feet. So 2x plus y? Yeah. And then what we're going to do is solve this for y so, so that minus 2X. we have like a rectangular area here in terms of x only. Okay. Okay, so the length or whatever the back piece is going to be 100 minus 2x. Now we want to know what dimensions he should fence in in order to maximize the area. So, whatever it says maximize with, that's what you're trying to find the derivative of. So if you're maximizing area, you need to create an area equation. And you find the area just by multiplying x times 100 minus 2x. Mm -hmm. So that's 100x minus 2x squared. Mm -hmm. In order to maximize that, you would find the derivative, which is 100 minus 4x set it equal to zero and solve and oops. so that's going to give us 25. Now answer the question it says what dimensions should he fence in in order to maximize the area so one of the dimensions got to be 25 is 25. The other, the is other gonna dimension is going to be 50 because it's 100 minus ah. 2x so ah. that's 50. Yes. Okay, so yes. that's your like final answer. You should say 25 feet by 50 feet. ATQ, answer the question. Yes, answer the question. Questions? No. That was so, so draw a picture and then see what you have. So I'm not promising it's going to be exactly like that, but it's going to be some sort of Common like sense maximize system. either area or volume or something. Draw a picture. Common sense, use the derivatives, answer the question. Right. So some sort of, but like an optimization question. So you're going to maximize your minimum. Yeah. Um, okay. It gives you revenue, cost, and wants, to fi wants you to find the number of units that must be produced and sold in order to yield the maximum profit. So same thing. Crop so equation, derivative, maximize the sh living crap out of it. So this is kind of assessing if you know how to find a profit equation for one. So remember, you're just taking revenue uh, and minusing. That's not a word. Subtracting cost, and, and so that's going to be 46x. Yeah, and then minus 10, 10. Minus 10. Because you got to distribute the negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then derivative because you're finding the maximum profit. Negative 0.10x. I mean, that's just one. Negative one. Negative x. Same difference. Of x so you get 46. that, yep. That's and then it. you set it equal to zero. Yep. Oh, I don't like Yeah. So that happened to me on the quiz. Well, sometimes it can be negative, but I don't know about in this situation. Like you can get a negative yeah. value for x as long as it. It should be. Not it should be positive forty-six because it should be positive. Oh. Why did I put negative there? I don't know. Okay, it, you can get a negative value for x in certain situations. It's like when you're losing um, money, right? Well, in this case. yeah, you can, but like the one on the quiz, you get a negative value for x. So what that means is, in order for us to maximize revenue, we don't need to decrease the price. We need to increase the price because in on the quiz, it was how many times should they decrease the price in order to maximize revenue then you, what you wind up getting is you get like a negative answer. 
Well, if you decrease it by a negative amount, you're really increasing the price. Mm -hmm. So for that one, it's okay to get a uh, negative X because yeah. it's it was like if you plug it back in, you'll still get a positive price. Mm -hmm. It just not it doesn't make sense to have like a negative amount of items. It doesn't make sense to have like a negative um, like that would like here. This is representing a number of units, so it wouldn't make sense to get negative forty six. But if X was representing like the number of times you should change the price, it doesn't yeah. make sense totally. But when you plug it back in, it did make sense. It, it yeah. what it really meant was you actually shouldn't lower the price. You should increase the price. So all you're gonna say for this one is forty six items. I'll maximize the price. Yeah. Do we have to answer? Okay. I mean, yeah, like put some units or whatever. An answer the question. If like writing a sentence is going to force you to write the question or answer the question, maybe do that. That's true. Okay. An open top rectangular box has a length twice that in width. Okay. So, like, let's see here. Open top. Drop it. Okay, it's not pretty, but okay. Okay, so an open top rectangular box. It says that the length is twice the width. It doesn't say so. If that's so, length equals two w twice the width, something like that. One of them is going to be yeah. One of them is going to be two of the other one. Yep. Um, we don't know the height of the box. Yep. It says that the volume is two hundred cubic feet. Yep. You're going to use that, similar to number one, you're going to use that to find y in terms of x. So if volume is length times width times height, Which we know that 200 has to be 2x, 2x times x, x times y. y. And you're going to solve that, that for, y. for y. So you get this which simplifies to 100 over x squared. And that is your y. Okay, so now we have all the dimensions. So now it's gonna tell you like some costs. So, let's see. Let's call this the base. And it is connected to... One. Do you want me to get that for you? Over x. So the sides that wrap around all have that height of 100 over x, and then a couple of them are 2x, and then the other couple are x. Then you have the base, and there's no top. So like, there's no top, so that's why I don't have another one of these. So this is the base here. Base. Okay. It says that the cost of the bottom is $2 per square foot. So the area of that like costs two dollars, and then it says that the cost of the sides are a dollar. So even though these are all different dimensions, they all cost a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to know the dimensions, the width, height, and length that will minimize the cost of producing the box, aka the surface area. So what you're doing is first you're going to figure out the surface area of this box thing. And then you're going to multiply that surface area by the cost of it. That's creating a cost of production of the box. Then you will find the minimum of that by differentiating and solving. So first, I'm going to create like an area equation, like a surface area equation. So the area of the base is 2x by x. That's 2x squared. And then I have two of these. Yep which are, so I have 2, 2x times 100 over x squared, and then I have two of these. So that's 2x by 100 over x squared. Um, I'm gonna simplify a little bit, but not all the way. So I have 2x squared that's representing the bottom, I have so the x would cancel. So I have 400 over x. And Plus 400 over x. This is like a 200 over x. Okay. 
Okay, so these are representing the sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, using the area. Can we add those together? You can, I'm not going to just because in theory, like if these were different prices, you wouldn't want to. Mm. Well, I mean, you would eventually, but. Not now. Yeah, I would do a little yeah. second, but I guess it's fine. Yeah, you can add them together. Okay. You wanna add them together? So 600 over X. So that's representing the area. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cost equation by multiplying these by the cost. So you're gonna take the cost of each thing and multiply it in, and that'll create the cost equation. So the cost of the base is $2. So you're taking two and multiplying it by the area of the base. And then the cost of the sides was $1. This is sort of irrelevant because it's one, but if it's not one, you're gonna take the price of the sides and multiply it by the sides. And just simplify that a little bit, so 4x squared plus 600 over x. Okay. In order to find the minimum, we need the derivative. So the derivative of this is 8x minus 600 over x squared. Now, just to clarify, so you're multiplying the negative one, subtract one from the exponent, you get that, and then you just rewrote it. Then you're gonna set that equal to zero. And solve. So add 600 over x squared over here. Oops. And then multiply x by x squared. 8 cubed. So 600 equals 8x cubed divided divide by 8. eight. What is that? Um, 600 divided by 8 is 75. 75. And then cube root that. Which is 5. No, it's not it's a not. nice number. It's a decimal. So you're, you're going to round. Let's round to two decimal places, three decimal places. So let's go back. We need to answer the question. So it says, um, what width, height, and length will minimize the cost of producing the box? So going back, let me erase a little bit. Uh, so you gotta plug that X. I don't need this. Ooh, did. Anymore. Okay. I'm still recording. Yep. You're good. So the length is uh, twice uh, the width, right? Yeah. So the length is two times this. Yep. And the width is just it. And then the height is 100 over it squared. So we what's don't, we don't what? need to simplify All right, that's fine. Yeah, you We're good. Make sure. you just plug that into your calculator, and then you yep. put feet. Some kind of feet, some kind of feet, some kind of feet. And the end. And then in theory, if it asks like, I don't know, what is the cost? I guess you could like plug that all back into the cost, but that would be icky. Yeah. You can do that. Okay. Look at this one. Um, this Crazy. one's pretty easy actually. So all you're doing is you're creating, you don't even have to create. So it gives you a revenue function. Um, it wants you to find, so first just the daily revenue when 27 frozen lunches are sold, you're just plugging in 27. Yeah. So R of 27 Wait. equals yeah. three times 27 to the two thirds power. Whatever that. Is. So the third is a cube root, so that's three, and then three squared is nine, and then nine times three is 27. So this is $27, and you're gonna put units. Okay, so that's the revenue when 27 lunches are sold. Then it wants you to know the marginal revenue. So marginal revenue, you're just gonna first find the derivative. 
So take the two thirds, multiply by three, you get two. two. Subtract X. one from the exponent. So that's third. the negative one third power. Okay. Then you're gonna take that, I mean, I would probably rewrite it. So this is two over the cube root of X. This is good review for the midterm in case you forgot how to do that. And then you're gonna plug in 27 into that and that'll be your marginal right now. So two over the cube root of 27. So that's two over three. Mm -hmm. And that's about 67 cents. Oh, you want so that cents. would be the extra or additional cost of producing the 28th item. Or not cost, I'm sorry, revenue. So the additional revenue for selling the 28th item. Mm. Good? So plug something in, find the derivative, plug something in. Do I have to do this one? No. We just have to talk about the whole, like, interpret the meanings of them. I said the amount of profit at 100 units yep. for B, and then I said the difference in profit between 100 and 101 units for right. D. That's good. Okay. And then you just plug stuff in there. Okay. This is one similar to Quizzes. the one on the quiz. So we need to know, like, how to do this. So you're going to have some sort of revenue created from the sale of that tickets. Was hard. That's easier than the it could just, it could not be tickets. It could be like anything. It's their types of revenue. Mm -hmm. There's one type of revenue, I think, in this question. So it says, a theater owner charges $16 for admission, and when they do that, 50 people come. Okay, so if they kept that price, 50, uh, 50 times 16 would be how much money we made. They're not going to keep the price. They are going to increase the price by 50 cents a certain number of times. And when they do that, they lose a customer from the average number. Um, now, we're going to just take this and set the, I probably should have scooted it over, but we're setting this equal to our revenue. Um, on the quiz, was there was so much an additional revenue. So, so then what that would be is if it said something like each cu customer spends an average of five on concessions, you just take the average number that they spend and multiply by how many people. That's how you would have done it in my quiz. Damn it. Um, okay, so then we'll multiply to simplify. So 16 and 50 and 50 and 30 and 8 and 360. What? Quite. How'd you get that? I didn't get that. 16 times 50 is 800. Is it? It is. Okay. I just did it in my calculator. Good again. Alright, so FOIL, get all that, simplify a little bit. And that's, what is that? 9? Yeah, it's 9x. In theory, it doesn't actually matter what the constant is. Yeah, it does. Because you're going to differentiate, it goes away. So, honestly, when I'm making the key, sometimes I like just skip that for sure. I don't care. Okay, so you get this, gotcha. which is nice, right? Yep. And so you set that equal to zero, and you get x equals nine. It doesn't have to be nine, it could be like 9.5 or 9.4. Like, it's just you're finding the what is it? Maximum? Yeah, you're finding the maximum for this function, and it might not be a nice number. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you're just going to round, just like in the last question that we rounded like the dimensions. It might not be like a perfect number, and in that case, you just want to round. What it shouldn't be, actually, like I was saying, this one could even be negative, like in theory. If it was negative 9, what that means is we don't want to increase the price. We want to decrease the price or something. So it could go both ways. Um, okay, so you get nine, and it says, what price per ticket should be charged to maximize revenue? So this expression here is representing the price. This expression here is representing the number of people. So you're going to plug in nine in here, and you're going to get 16 plus half of nine. So that is $20.50. And you're going to put $20.50 because it's a price. Then it says how many people will attend at that price. You're going to plug in 9 into the number of people. And so that is 
41 people. Well, people, because it's a number of people. And that's it. Question? Don't erase that yet. I think that's pretty easy. It's just the wrinkle you put in the quiz just threw me off. Um, we're estimating oh. the square root of 17, and I give, I'm going to give you this, so you don't have to like memorize that. But remember, this is just representing the change in y, and it's equal to the derivative with x plugged in times the change in x. So for this one, because it says square root, your function mm -hmm. is the square root of x. Yep. Now, while we do this question, we're going to eventually need the derivative, so we might as well just like find that now. So if I rewrite this as x to the 1 half, my derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over 2 root 2, or 2 root x. I don't know why I said root 2. Mm -hmm. OK, so that part, if we look at this, is going to go here. And then we need to multiply by delta x. Well, we don't really know what that is yet. So the next part of this is, if we're estimating the square root of 16, we want to compare that to something close by that we do know. So, wait, did I say 16? Yep, you said 16. I meant 17. But we're we want to use, use the square root of 16 yeah. because it's close by. So if it was like 29, we would probably pick 25. It would be less accurate because it's farther away. If it was like 37, we would pick 36. 36. So, all right, so then you're going to compare. So comparing delta x is going to be what we picked, like not, sorry, not in the square root, like the number that we picked mm -hmm. comparatively, like the difference or distance between that and what we're trying to figure out. The other way, sorry. The change from... But x the change e. from x equals 16 to x equals 17, the difference is that I wrote the difference backwards. So when you change from 16 to 17, that's an increase. So whatever you're picking, you're comparing what you picked to what you're trying to get to. So it's always positive? So if it's increasing, it's positive. But let's say it wants us to estimate the square root of 35, we would choose... 36, mm -hmm. and the change from 36 to 35 is a decrease of 1. Mm -hmm. So the change from what you so pick to what you want. Yeah, so our delta x is 1, because we're changing from 16 to 17. x is 16. The square root part is not technically part of x, that's part of the function. Um, what was the x we picked? 16. 16, so this is 16. And then we multiply. So it's 1 over 8. So yeah, so this is 4 times 2 is 8. That's 1 over 8. So that is the change in y. What you're going to do is, if it's a positive number, you're going to add it to the square root of 16. So what was the square root of 16? 4. 4. So because our change in y is an eighth, then that means that the square root of 17 is approximately 4 and an eighth. And if it was negative, it would be approximately 3 and 7 eighths, because it would be going down. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that your answer, like, obviously makes sense in context of numbers. So the square root of 17 should be a bigger number than the square root of 16. The square root of 35 should be easy, a smaller number than the square root of 36. So you're going to choose a perfect square, and then find the change in that to what we're trying to estimate and then just kind of like use this guy so if we memorize the delta y equals 1 over 2 square root x times delta x is that probably pretty much yeah yeah because it's going to be like a square root i guess i feel like i could maybe make it a cube root but i'm not going to that would be really mean. yeah it would be mean <laughs> but i guess i could in theory and then you would like differentiate the cube root but see, that would be like harder because cube roots are so far apart. Far, it would be less accurate. So I feel like it would be, I mean, you could do like this cube root of 27 and then like 28 and compare, I guess. In theory, you could do it, but. All right, so eight is implicit differentiation. So I threw in some stuff here so we could review like 
we've kind of been doing it anyway, but just reviewing for the midterm, I'm gonna throw in some rules, like quotient rule, product rule, chain rule, I'm gonna throw those in here so that you're remembering them. So like, that's why I have this right here. This is a chain rule. So when we're doing implicit differentiation, every time you see a y and you find the derivative of it, you should put in a dy over dx. So if you look at the first term, there's no y there, so you don't have to do that. So you're just gonna find the derivative by taking the four, multiplying it by 2x minus 1, raise that to the 3, the third power, multiply and then by multiply two. by 2, because that's the derivative of the inside. Now the second term, not only does it have a y in it, but it's a product. Okay, So you're going to do first d second plus second d first. So we have first x times dy over dx. And then d second is dy over dx mm -hmm. plus second over. times d first. Yep. Just just one. Okay. Yep. The next term is a y term. So we know that we're going to differentiate it. And then after we differentiate it, we're going to put in the a dy, dy over dx. And then the derivative of a constant is always zero. All right. So now we're going to like clean this up a little bit. I'm going to multiply the 4 and the 2. I'm going to get rid of that, I guess. So plus y. And we have x times dy over dx minus 3y squared dy over dx equals 0. Anything that has a dy over dx is going to stay on the left, and anything that doesn't is going to go on the right. So we're going to subtract this and this. So minus 8 times all adjunct, and then we're also going to subtract y. Um, do not distribute the 8 unless this is like a 1, like unless it's not a power. So don't distribute before you do the power. In theory, the only way you'd be able to distribute is if you expanded this using like Pascal's triangle, which you wouldn't do because that would take time. Okay, on the left, we're going to factor out a dy and a dx, or a dy over dx from both of those. So we have dy over dx, and then x minus 3y squared. So there. This is like the easiest thing on the test. And then you're going to divide by all of this. Yeah, it's easy mode. Like this is the literally, one, if you get this wrong, you should just quit. The one, there's two of these. There was, um, the one on the quiz actually simplified a little bit. Oh my if god. If you did it right. If you did it right. Oh. But like oh Andy and Juliana didn't do right. So I didn't even, I didn't <laughs> you even wouldn't look. have noticed. I didn't even look. If you looked simplify. closely, like all the it wasn't like this. All the terms, um, you could have like canceled a two out of all of them. Like they were all even. So you could have canceled a two. So you do want to check. There are certain situations where you could simplify. So just check. I'm not gonna give you all the situations where you could simplify, you should know that, but do look. Um, a bunch of the ones we did, like, you couldn't. That's rough. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. even look. Uh, Andy, I think you forgot a dy over dx in one of them. And so it's all this the rest to be kind of wrong. I tried to give you some partial credit. <laughs> um, OK, and then there's another one. So another implicit differentiation. So for this one, we're going to go through and do the same type of thing. So first derivative, we don't need a dy over dx. We're just going to do 12x squared. Next, this is just a regular y, so minus 3y squared, but we need the dy over dx. The third one needs product rule. So first, whoops, so first, d second. When you do d second, you're finding the derivative of y, which is just dy over dx. And then you're going to do plus second and then d first. So d first is 3. So we're going to turn that into a 3y. Derivative of 0 is 0. Alrighty, we're going to factor out a dy over dx out of these two. And then I'm going to subtract this and this. divide everything, this is one that simplifies. So 
if you look closely, what can you simplify? Take out a three. Yeah, you take out a three everywhere. So if you factor out a three out of the top and a three out of the bottom, you can cancel it. And so that's what's left is your answer. So negative 4x squared minus y over negative y squared plus x. That's your answer. Um, how did you... No, not your answer. Ow. Ow. I just took a 3 out of everything. It's good. It's good. Oh, yeah. It's good. Good for all. Is it good? It's good. It's good. Oh. Don't. Oh. Related rate. All right. Find the rate of change with respect to time of the total revenue in dollars. So, the rate of change. This is so easy. With respect to time of revenue. Yep. So, we're finding dr over dt. Change of revenue. Remember, d means like change. It's like delta r over delta t. So, change in revenue over change in time. That is going to be equal to. The yeah. change in the revenue with respect to the items, so x. And then dx over dt. And then times the dx over the dt, so the change in the items with respect to time. Yep. And if you look at it like stoichiometrically, if you look at the right side, you would be able to cancel this and this, and that gives you dr over dt, which is how you know how to set up the rate. Okay. Now they're going to give you... I'll give you a function, so we won't have to worry about creating the function. Um, but in theory, like the ones you did on your homework were like volumes changing or something. And so if it's volume changing, I'll make sure I give you the volume formula. So this part, you're going to like do the calculus with. So you're gonna actually find the change in revenue with respect to x. If this is your revenue equation with respect to x, you're going to differentiate this. You're basically finding r prime. So that's 1,000 minus 2x. So that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Then you got to plug in 10 for x. Oh, wait, gonna, yeah. never mind. No, yeah. So now you're going to plug stuff in. So you yeah. just have to know where to plug it in. So we have x is 400 items. Yeah. You're going to plug that in for x. It gives you. This guy, it's that's 10. 10. You're just gonna substitute him in for the whole thing. And so, you should get 1,000 minus 2 times 400. 2,000? 20,000? Yeah, two, wait, wait, two. hold on. Because this is 1,000 minus 800, that's 200 times 10, which is 2,000. Two thousand. Yeah. And okay. you're gonna say this is $2,000 per day units. That is the rate of change of the revenue with respect to time. I'm kind of confused on this. Okay, go. Questions? Um, so how do you set up the original dr over dt? So you're going to have three things, three rates of change. Mm -hmm. They're all going to relate to each other. Mm -hmm. Depending on what they want you to find, you might have to, like, like in some situations, we, like, solved for, like, a different one. But basically, this one you're gonna find your actual, this is where the actual derivative comes in. So this one's gonna relate to the function that is going to be given to you and you're gonna differentiate that function. And that will just find the rate of change of whatever. So if it's like the one on the quiz, it was volume, you're finding how the volume is changing with respect to the radius. Okay. But then they're bringing in this third variable, which is time. So the whatever it is, will change with respect to time. In this case, it's the number of items. On the quiz, it was the radius. The radius is changing with respect to time. Um, and so you have to make sure that when you set this up, the this one is on top over here, and this one is on bottom over here. Yeah. And then the thing in between is going to be your independent variable for the function given, okay. okay? So like every time and it has to be able to cancel out and that's mm -hmm. why it makes sense because when you cancel it out, you get this. Okay. 
the units should like make sense in that situation too. Like we have dollars per day. Instead of and like then you multiply it. super dollars. And so then, so you find your derivative. They gave us this. They're either gonna give you dx over dt, or they might give you dr over dt. So they could have given us 2,000, and they would have it would have said something like, the change in revenue per day is $2,000. Find the, the rate of change of the number of items with respect to time, and then you would have been solving for this. Okay. In this situation, they gave you dx over dt, which is units per day, and we found dollars per day. Okay. So check the units and those will tell you what it is. Like that'll tell you the rate of change. So remember per means like divide. Yeah. So units per day is units over days. Okay. And units are X. Okay. And if it says dollars per day, remember dollars is revenue, day is time, so you're doing revenue over time. Yeah. Does that make sense? So try to use the units that they give you to know where to put stuff. But you have to be able to create like your related rates, so. Maybe I can look at a couple more examples of that. 